A very good morning to you and welcome to morning prayer from the Churches of Canton in the ministry area of West Cardiff. Today is Monday the 24th of January. Wales history is rich with myth and legend and this week has got two amazing Welsh saints in it. We look forward tomorrow to celebrating the feast of St Dwynwen or Doinwen, uh, the Welsh patron saint of lovers who, unlucky in love herself, spent her life praying for couples in relationships to know love and to know God's blessings. But today, one of the legends that's certainly very popular from the BBC's titular tea time drama to uh, Disney films to Monty Python is that of King Arthur. And, and Arthur's court is rumoured to have been in many places, but one of the popularly believed locations is about 15 miles that way um, from us here in Canton over in Caleon uh, just outside Newport and this certainly corroborates the stories about St Caddock whose feast day is today. St Caddock was a fifth or sixth, well fifth to sixth century abbot of Clancarvan uh, which was the monastery famous um, from the era of the British church as the centre of learning, where St Iltid um, spent the first period of his religious life under Caddock's tutelage. Caddock was born into a royal family somewhere around the year 497, and miracles were woven through the very fabric of his life, even to the blinding light and cellars that were miraculously filled with food when he was born. He eschewed wealth and power and devoted his life to God. And he's credited with reminding King Arthur of the temporal nature of the kingship of men after Caddock, who was sheltering a man who was believed to have killed some of Arthur's men, offered Arthur a substantial herd of cattle in compensation. Caddock himself delivered them to Arthur, but when Arthur accepted them and took possession of them, they turned into bundles of ferns. Um, Caddock is remembered in all expressions of Celtic Christianity and his life is said to have touched Scotland where it's said that he founded a monastery alongside Bannockburn. Um, he's remembered in Cornwall and in Brittany which he famously visited on pilgrimage to Rome and where churches still bear his name. In your own prayers today maybe recall that legend of Arthur's Ferns and pray for the leaders of the world that they may be guided by God's hand and that wise people in their lives may remind them and support them in the passing nature of their kingship and their importance and, and help to give them humility to seek God's purpose and bigger picture for the wellness of humanity and the world. Now, tomorrow the church will be marking um, the feast of, uh, well, the conversion of St. Paul, but don't forget the feast of St. Doinwen, the Welsh patron saint of lovers. So if you abhor the commerciality of Valentine's Day in February, find a way to mark the feast of St. Doinwen, celebrate relationships that are meaningful to you, and pray for families in our lives and in our churches, um, and for those couples who are getting married this year, and continue to pray and give thanks for the work of our Mother's Union here in Canton and in the wider world. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 108 My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, O my soul. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is higher than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Give victory with your right hand, and answer me, so that those whom you love may be rescued. God has promised in his sanctuary, With exultation I will divide up Shechem, and portion out the vale of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah is my scepter, Moab is my wash basin, on Edom I hurl my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? 
who will lead me to Edom? Have, have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go out, O God, with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for human help is worthless. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, O Lord, and your glory is over all the earth. Come to our aid with the dawning of the day, that we may tread down the powers of darkness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The New Testament reading today is Matthew 26, verses 1 to 16. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name is Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar full of very expensive perfume. She poured it on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have. You will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver, and from then on Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Here ends the lesson. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain. Bring hope even in the darkest night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, stretch out your healing hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace. To Fides, Elizabeth, John, Arletta, Jill, the Holder family, Lucy, Lorna and Geoffrey, Michelle, Jane, Audrey, Margaret, Sandra, Rhiannon, Gareth, Sue, Richard and Charlotte, and those that we know in our own hearts who need to feel your loving presence, your healing presence in their lives. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Almighty God, who called Kadok to proclaim the gospel to this nation, give us, your servants, such faith and power of love that as we rejoice in his triumph, we may profit by his example. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you all have a fantastic day today and that you find reasons to celebrate tomorrow on St. Twin Wednesday. Take care and God bless. Bye bye.